Two instructive headlines from the bourgeois financial news website Business Insider give an indication of how the balance of global wealth has shifted since the COVID-19 pandemic began in early 2020. The first, billionaires made $3.9 trillion during the pandemic, informing us that the likes of the Victorian workhouse logistics baron Jeff Bezos and the Bolivian coup-mongering boar Elon Musk saw their net worth rise by $3.9 trillion over the past year, and the second, workers lost $3.7 trillion in earnings during the pandemic. Women and Gen Z saw the biggest losses, indicating in fairly stark terms where the super exploiters' newfound increases in wealth came from. We can quibble about where the missing $0.2 trillion came from another time. Sheer ingenuity and force of will, perhaps. The overarching message is clear. The past year has seen the world's major capitalists pull off the greatest upward transfer of wealth in the shortest space of time in world history. Of course, upward transfer of wealth is simply a euphemism for the daylight robbery of the working class. The figures referred to by Business Insider were taken from an Oxfam report on global inequality and unpaid work, and a report by the International Labour Organization on the economic consequences of COVID-19, both published in January 2021. The reports are worth reading for their stark findings, if not for their predictably disappointing milquetoast conclusions and solutions, concentrating mainly on quantitative taxing measures and the woolly language about equality as a means of addressing the desperate situations they describe. Liberals and reformists are at pains to deny what we as revolutionaries have known for over a century now, and is borne out by a historical fact. Inequality is an inherent and unavoidable part of capitalism by its own internal logic, in the pursuit of growth and profit in a world of finite resources, will only increase. In the mortal words of James Connolly, the day is past for patching up the capitalist system. It must go. But what has the ruling class been up to while workers have been living under lockdown of one sort or another over the past 12 months? In Britain, the Tory government has moved to criminalise protests through a controversial new policing bill justified in part under the pretense of protecting public health. As well as giving police more draconian powers to crack down on public protest, the bill refers to protests that cause an adverse impact to businesses. Such a movement could result in the criminalisation of economic boycotts, such as the anti-Zionist boycott divestment and sanctions movement, among other things. The effects of the bill would be far-reaching and have been ably summarised in the Morning Star and elsewhere. But we should be under no illusions, our political class will not be far behind their colonial masters in pursuing similar legislation here when the opportunity arises. Discussion of climate change, undoubtedly considered the most pressing issue facing the planet in 2019, subsided greatly with the events of the past year. However, pollution, waste, war and the burning of fossil fuels still continue, as well as an estimated 4 billion disposable masks that are being discarded globally every day. The ruling class have wasted no time in capitalising on this by investing in green technologies and, of course, buying stakes in the global water supply. We must be clear, one of the central reasons for the capitalists' moves to privatise water is the certainty of even more widespread water scarcity in the coming years, as a direct result of climate change. Indeed, Oxfam estimates that by 2025, 2.4 billion people could be without access to clean drinking water captive market that they intend to readily exploit. Disappointingly, in the name of supporting measures taken to defend public health, many on the left have taken a reactionary position in relation to acknowledging the class dynamics of COVID-related restrictions, both domestically and globally. So-called lockdown has not meant lockdown for all. It must be remembered that essential workers in factories, food processing plants, health services, public transport, delivery and logistics and many other industries are unable to do their jobs remotely, working in a high-risk environment to provide the goods and services required for society to function. At the same time, access to health, education and other essential services have been drastically limited for those without the financial means to gain access to private solutions. Practical supports for workers' mental health have been subsumed by mindfulness webinars and the likes, while remote learning has taken the place of real educational opportunities and access to libraries. Lockdown, a public health measure, presented an opportunity for capitalists that they readily accepted, and the scale of the crisis in which you are living, already well entrained before 2020 began, has yet to be fully realised. 
For one, we can be certain that the shift of office labour to remote working undertaken under COVID-19 will mean further large-scale loss of jobs and erosion of workers' rights, as well as significant effects on physical and mental health. The dystopian future promised by climate change represents a very real public health crisis, which is already the lived reality for many in the developing world. At the time of writing, more than 2.7 million people globally have died of COVID-19 since the pandemic began. The only people to benefit from this global tragedy have been the ruling class. They are in the process of consolidating their gains. How long are we going to let them get away with it? To see the full references used in this article, please click on the link below to access the Socialist Voice website.